We are Husky Robotics from the University of Washington. Now in our 11th year, we work through a two-year design cycle to design, build, and test our rover. Our team is proud to employ workshop curriculum to train new members, preparing them for classes and industry. This year, we have developed an innovative and agile mobility unit for the traversal of the landscape, a dexterous arm for part manipulation, our most capable soil analysis system, and effective control software for our most reliable and advanced rover yet, Oversight. Throughout the year, our manufacturing team conducts training to develop and enhance the team's capabilities in manual and CNC machining. Our machine shop and training program has allowed us to make complex custom parts quickly and efficiently. Our electronics subsystem focuses on delivering reliable and modular electrical solutions to effectively power the motors and sensors of our rover. To enhance the reliability of network communications and to minimize miswiring, we use a combination of stacking headers and key wire connectors, reducing the overall footprint of the electronic components inside the rover's chassis. The rover's operations are regulated by custom embedded circuit boards that are responsible for power distribution, motor controls, and telemetry, and data collection as well. We use a custom CAN protocol to communicate between boards on our rover. All of our boards run custom team-built firmware that interfaces with brushed and brushless motors, status LEDs, hobby servos, and various sensors. These boards handle control loops and polling so that the main computer can focus on high-level control and other processes. We use Infineon's PSOC microcontrollers, which give us access to powerful hardware resources to control our rover with reliability and low latency. Husky Robotics' software has been steadily evolving for the last few years, and now we are more capable than ever before. Our web UI is the main interface between the operators and the rover. We've built it with efficiency and effectiveness in mind. Particularly, low latency video streams allow for our operators to maintain situational awareness, and our offline satellite maps greatly aid long distance navigation. Running on our robot, sensor fusion algorithms give us high accuracy state estimates, which we feed into a global planner and local controller for long distance navigation. Additionally, our kinematic control algorithms enable precise and agile manipulation with the arm. We also leverage a 3D simulator for rapid testing. Using it, we can safely test new navigation and even arm control algorithms without worrying about any associated dangers or risks of hardware damage. For our rover's mobility unit, we wanted to ensure functionality on all terrain, so we built a new hinge frame that can sit low and stable for climbing hills or raise up to clear obstacles. The larger frame is light and strong with liberal use of welding, and the new spring-based front suspension keeps the wheels on the ground and protects the arm from jolts. The air-inflated tires further increase our suspension ability, and the wheel hubs are designed to handle very large force loads, ensuring functionality of the mobility unit. The strength of our unit was verified using worst-case scenarios to inform finite element analysis, and the rover at this stage is fully ready to compete, but our further goal is to improve the tread on the pre-existing tires so as to help our maneuverability. On the ARM subsystem, we are proud to present our improved ARM module. Our design features a large cross-roller bearing that allows us to withstand the unidirectional loads from unexpected circumstances. Our extensive use of FEA and topology optimization has enabled us to reduce the weight of the ARM to just about 10 kilograms, greatly reducing mass while still maintaining high stiffness. Positioner sensors such as potentiometers on each joint provide absolute positioning for simpler and more accurate control while extensive use of limit switches eliminate the possibility of self-collisions. Our new and improved adaptive gripper hand is a testament to our reliable mechanical design. And finally, the unique U-channel design of the arm allows for it to fold down on itself, lowering the center of the mass and creating a smaller footprint on the chassis, further protecting it from the unexpected impacts. The instrumentation station uses a linear actuator to hold an auger and hopper used to collect and store soil. After collection, the hopper raises to dispense the dirt onto a conveyor belt. Attached to the drill are a microscope and sensory array. We have humidity, temperature, and several gas sensors. The soil samples are deposited onto a conveyor belt, which delivers the soil to our chemical test, sample storage, and raw spectrometer. Our chemical tests use pumps and a lazy susan to test soil water from up to six sites. For testing, we are using a buree test for proteins and iodine test for starches. We are also using test strips to test the amount of ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, phosphate, sulfate, and pH levels. Our sample collection mechanism holds up to three site samples at once. Once a preferred sample is selected, a lid will be snapped onto the jar, which can then be easily be removed by hand to give to the judges. Our Roman spectrometer analyzes samples for the presence of carrageen. So from the conveyor belt is funneled to the spectrometer, ground to help with accuracy, deposited into vials, and tamped for a smooth surface analysis. A small lazy susan helps allow for independent examination of each sample and prevent cross-contamination. We would like to thank our sponsors and donors for their support.